how's it going? So if you are new to my channel, I just kind of want to give you a little bit of a backstory about my breastfeeding journey with my second child. So I recently weaned my son. Actually, I guess it's not that recent anymore. I had him weaned for about six months. So he was about 22 months old when he was weaned and it was my choice to wean him, which I know can be a bit of an unpopular opinion sometimes, but that's just how it went for us and how it's worked best. But I get questions a lot from especially working moms about how I was able to breastfeed him for almost two years while I was working. Just a, again, a little bit more backstory. I worked outside of the home for the first like year and a half of his life and Harrison was home with me for like the first four months. I was away from him working full time for about a year so it was a pretty substantial amount of time and a pretty substantial commitment as far as pumping and making sure that I had enough milk available for him. So I just wanted to give you guys my tips on how to have a really successful long-term breastfeeding relationship while you are working full-time outside of the home. So the first thing I think for me is that I really committed to breastfeeding initially. If you, if you don't follow my channel, if you're new here, you may not know that we like to eat really clean and we like to keep chemicals out of our family as much as possible. And we fed our daughter formula and had a really poor experience. She ended up with a lot of constipation and a lot of other issues that just kind of went along with formula feeding. So while formula feeding is totally fine for some families, it just doesn't really work for us. And so in my mind, I knew that I didn't want to formula feed. I would have formula fed if that was like my absolute only option, but I knew that when I had my daughter, I didn't have any issues with milk production. I knew that because I pumped with her because she was the NICU baby. I pumped with her for at least the first two months of her life. And so I knew that I was at least able to produce a good amount of milk. So if Harrison could latch, I thought we would be in business. So I really committed to breastfeeding. In my mind, there wasn't really another option. So I would say if you are planning to return to work outside the home, that committing to your breastfeeding journey is like hands down one of the most important things that you can do to make your breastfeeding journey last however long you want it to last. And so if that is something that you're looking to pursue, I highly, highly recommend either like just kind of speaking into existence or just really committing in whatever way works best for you. The second tip that I have for you is to get on a pumping schedule or just a schedule in general with nursing and pumping and stick to it. If I could go back when I was on my maternity leave, I wish that I would have started pumping way earlier. I wish I would have started pumping when Harrison was like four days old. I know that a lot of hospitals and nurses and even lactation consultants really frown upon upon pumping that early, but I'm a person that makes just enough milk to feed my son. And I know that there are also some negatives to having an oversupply. Like you can often have clogged ducts and baby might not want to nurse because of the strong letdown, that kind of thing. But honestly, I wish I had sort of given myself at least a little bit of an oversupply so that I would have been able to build up a freezer stash a little bit quicker for him. So this might not work for everyone and it really depends on how your body works. If you are prone to clogged ducts and mastitis, and that kind of thing. This is not something that maybe you would want to consider, but this is something that I wish that I would have done. Also, I wish that I would have introduced the bottle to him while we're kind of on the topic a little bit earlier because Harrison wanted nothing to do with the bottle and I waited the full like four to six weeks like a lot of folks recommend and I think by that point he was just really kind of stuck on nursing and it was a really big fight for like us and our daycare provider to get him to take a bottle whenever it was necessary. He did kind of come around but I wish that I had done that. But back to getting on a schedule and sticking to a schedule, I think that is the most important thing. And for me, I kind of figured out a bit of a schedule that worked for us. So what I would do is I would nurse Harrison when I would drop him off. So right 
you know, right before I went to work. Then when I got to work, I had a little bit of prep time. I had about a half an hour in my classroom alone before students would get there. So I would pump for about 15 minutes in the morning, then students would come, and then I would use part of my lunch break to pump as well. And then I would have a few more classes with students, and then we would have like a two hour time period in the afternoon where we had no students. So I would, again, I would pump one more time. Then after I left work, I would nurse Harrison as soon as I got home, and then I would pump right before I went, went to bed. So. If I'm completely honest with you, this schedule was 100% exhausting. I remember sometimes that I was sitting up in my bed and I was like falling asleep pumping or my husband would have to wake me up from pumping and I just wanted to go to sleep. For me, breastfeeding was exhausting just in general. It just took a lot out of me and that's just kind of how it was. But adding working and caring for my little tiny baby and also caring for my 10 year old and fitting in time for my husband in there, it was just a very exhausting time like looking back. But this schedule worked really well for me to be able to give my son enough milk. I knew in my head that if I didn't stick to this schedule that he wouldn't have enough milk for the day. My next piece of advice is to be prepared with extra parts. I actually invested in two pumps. So I had one that I got through my insurance that was covered so I didn't have to pay for that one. And then I found a new in the box that had none of the plastic opened pump online in a mom's group. And it again, it hadn't been used so I felt totally comfortable purchasing it for a lower cost. And the reason why I did this was so that I wouldn't have to be dragging stuff back and forth because I knew if I did, I was gonna forget something. And fortunately, in my classroom, I also had a sink where I could clean things, so it's not like I had to bring all of my pump parts home and clean them. I was able to clean and sterilize all of my work pump stuff right there at work, which was amazing. It was really, really great. So that is something that worked really well for me. I also fortunately only worked just a few minutes from home when I was working outside the home. The school where I used to work was about, I don't know, like five minutes minutes away. So if I forgot something, I could like run home on my lunch break or I could run home during that afternoon time, but I would have to wait all the way till then. So I would have to miss that morning pump, which could throw my schedule off. So I just know just kind of how I am a little bit scatterbrained sometimes that having two separate pumps was the way to go for me and that might be something that works well for you as well. The next tip that I have for you is to know your rights and to make a plan with your employer before you return from your maternity leave. This was a huge mistake that I made. I knew my rights but I didn't know what my employer's expectations were going to be and honestly they were pretty disheartening in the beginning. So. I do not feel like I should have been pumping during my lunch break. Like that was my time to decompress and to eat my lunch. I wish that I would have kind of stood up for myself and asked for a time when I could have stepped out of the classroom or something like that to have time to pump. I was totally fine with pumping in the morning and the afternoon times because I could multitask. I could both pump and work at the same time, which was totally fine with me. But I don't think that I should have had to use my lunch break time to pump. So please, please, please research your rights and make a plan that you're comfortable with with your employer before you return from your maternity leave. The next tip that I have for you is to watch your posture and to avoid back pain. When Harrison was probably like eight months old, I got this horrific upper back pain. And I at first did not associate it with pumping and nursing. But as time went on, I kind of figured it out. I put two and two together. I was someone who was pumping like like at my desk or on the couch when I was home or kind of leaned over my bed and I was just not having the best posture and it was not the best situation for my body. So I recommend finding like a comfortable chair that sits you up straight or however you are most comfortable and have the best posture to avoid back pain. The next tip that I have for you to prolong your nursing and pumping journey is to talk to other moms, especially other moms who are in the same situation and have kids the same age as you. It can be so isolating when you are the only mom who has to pump and breastfeed at work. Maybe you're someone who likes to eat lunch with your coworkers and you're no longer able to because you have to pump. Or maybe you're someone that doesn't feel comfortable pumping in your workspace and you know you just have no one to talk to about it. So 
make sure that you are connecting with other moms, especially if there are other moms that you work with. Fortunately, there was another gal that I worked with whose baby was born. I want to say he was born like a month or two before Harrison and we were constantly talking about how things were going or how it was to be a working mom with an infant. So it was really great to have that support. If for whatever reason you don't have any friends who are local around you who are moms, online Facebook groups can be great. I know there's a lot of breastfeeding and nursing groups and I'll actually link some that I really like down below so you can have that resource. And there are sometimes specifically ones for working moms. I know there's one local to the Portland area that is specifically for breastfeeding moms who work. So it can be a bit different of a journey when you're breastfeeding and working and trying to balance all the things than if you are breastfeeding and staying at home with your baby. That's not to say that one is harder or easier or one is better or worse. They're just really different. So if you can find somebody who can share in the journey with you, I think that it will help you out so, so much. And those are all of the tips that I have for you guys. So that is basically like how I was able to stay sane and make it through two years of breastfeeding and working. Something actually that helped me, and I recommend this to moms all the time if you can, or if it's something that you're interested in doing, I felt so much more comfortable in my work environment clearly when I changed to work from home. Not only was it, you know, my home environment where I got to pump, but also a lot of my coworkers are work from home moms as well. And a lot of them have kids and a lot of them just really understand what I'm going through. And so even when we do have to work off site or when we do have to go off site for a meeting, they get it. They get what I'm going through. So if working from home is something that you're at all interested in, or if you are all at all able to pursue, I highly recommend it. I will say that it's not for everyone. I am a homebody and I don't mind kind of being alone during the day or not seeing very many people during the day. That is absolutely something that is fine <laughs> with me. But some people really crave that office and work or a classroom environment depending on where you're working. So just know that working from home has a lot of benefits, but it isn't for everyone. So just kind of know like what you need out of your work environment. And if you can, I would honestly look into that. If that's something that you're interested in pursuing. So that is everything that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up for me. If you're new around here, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button below. I would love to have you join our community. And if you are also a working mom and you breastfed for six months or more, feel free to leave any tips that you have down below in the comments. I know that a lot of our moms here would love to get those tips. And thank you guys just everyone so much for being here. If you are subscribed, also hit that notification bell on your way out. And if you want to connect with me on any other social sites, I'm over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can find all that stuff down in the description. It's all down there. And by the way, you guys have fun today.